In this video, we're building pallets, painting barrels, wooden crates and cable reels. To move the goods, we're modifying the classic Märklin crane from the 1950s. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. Hey, what's this? <laughs> I was supposed to be in quarantine and I am for sure. And you know, after three days I was like crawling on the walls. So I went down to uh, the basement and there I found this uh, crane. Yeah, it's been on the shelf for a while. I got it from a friend who's cleaned out his basement and uh, was kind enough to give it to me. So why not extend the, the fright operations a bit with some detailing and to modify this crane and integrate it into my digital system. Yeah, I, I found these uh, wooden crates from a supplier called Maple Leaf. They are available in different sizes and uh, fits uh, very well into my harbor scene. So I'm building a couple of these. Uh, they are provided as laser kits. There weren't very many pieces to assemble to make the crate, which is a good thing because most often you want to build a lot of these. I'm putting up a link to the Maple Leaf website where you can buy these uh, crate kits. I prefer to assemble laser cut kits using PVA glue. And the boxes uh, quite quickly comes together and uh, once the actual box is completed, just assemble the frames on the outside and the top lid. And once assembled, it looks like this. I have this uh, woodworking industry up in Himmelsboda and they have extended their product range are now also supplying pallets. So I'm gonna build a couple of those pallets also suitable for harbor warehouse use. These pallet kits are very cleverly made. So you keep uh, the parts in the frame and then you just glue the spacers in place like this so and you don't have to worry too much about uh, getting the correct position of all the pieces you just simply glue the layers together like this and then once you have the layers in place and the facet glue is set then the pallet is ready Another item which uh, you simply can't have enough of is the oil barrels or actually barrels for all kind of liquids. These are molded uh, from maple leaf and they need to be grinded somewhat in the bottom to make them flat. With the mold burr gone, we will now paint these. I use uh, this type of sticky rubber. It's uh, typically used to stick posters to the wall. But here I instead stick my barrels into it so it stays while I'm priming these. And the primer I'm using is the gray one-shot MIG primer and I apply it using airbrush. So make sure to get a nice an even distributed coat of primer over the entire barrel and unfortunately I didn't have a acrylic based metal shine uh, paint so I had to go for Humbrol. This is Humbrol 54. It's a kind of metal. I wasn't entirely happy with this uh, paint. It looks more like uh, casted iron than actually plate so but hey it's good it's uh, okay for a foundation like this next step is to add some wash on this i have two paints here it's uh cavalry brown which is the red one and i have this burnt umber which i'm mixing now and i'm checking so i have a nice proportions between thinner and paint. Now I still have too much paint so I add a bit more thinner. The thinner here is just water so then I'm ready to apply it. Now just uh, apply this uh, wash over the entire can so all of the surfaces get covered. 
and then let it dry and it would look something like this. What you can do as well is to add uh, paint on barrels. And if you wait just a few minutes before um, the paint is dry, you can uh, wipe off the paint and get a nice looking flake effect without any expensive uh, tooling or ingredients. And here they are glued on a pallet. Another new product for my industry up in Himmelsboda is wooden cable reels. These count as kit from Maple Leafs as well with a backside adhesive which simplifies the assembly of these reels. Also good if you have an industry doing these, you need a lot of these reels. Quick to assemble and really realistically looking. I got this uh, crane from a friend who found it when he cleared out his basement. It's a classic 50s product from Merklin. It has item number 7051. This crane really has some impressive motorization and mechanics. Uh, and uh, in this uh, restoration, I wouldn't say restoration, in this uh, rebuild, some of it has to go. Uh, we will uh, add a new motorization and I will make a portal crane from it. So we will also cut some in the structure. So we're disassembling the crane and then we can start the conversion. These portal cranes will stand on wheels and uh, be able to move on tracks in the harbor. For this we need wheels and if you're running Merklin system like I'm doing then you will have a lot of these DC wheels which has been replaced with Merklin's. I will use the wheel suspension from these scrap cars. It's in plastic so then we don't have to think about the electric isolation. So I'm just removing the wheels and separating the yeah, now we're just going to use a figure saw to saw out that uh, piece we want. It's better to cut deep than uh, to get it too shallow because we need some width here to fit the wheel. And uh, this is what they look like, the pieces. Now there is a brake mechanism here and uh, since we're adding these in pairs there will be two brake mechanisms and we don't need that. So my idea here was to cut these uh, parts in two and thereby we separate the brake mechanism on one of these for each wheel. Now you will have a, a level of burr here, so we need to sand or grind away that burr. Now this is what the parts look like when they're ready for assembly. Now I measured the distance between the two holders to 6.5 millimeters. So we're gonna first remove the wheel sides and then we're going to shorten this shaft to 6.5 millimeter. And I'm just holding my measuring tool like this and then I'm making a mark with a razor blade. And then we just need a motor grinder to cut the shaft just outside that mark. Now I don't have a metal lathe. So instead I'm using my drilling machine. And I put it into a vise, secure it, and then use a piece of paper tape to control the RPM of the drilling machine. And then I'm just using a standard uh, file like this. And I continue to file until I have a pointy edge and then Finally, I'm using a soft sanding block to get it a bit smooth. Using a hammer, I'm reassembling the shaft into the wheel like this. And it's just to assemble the wheel 
I use fast set glue to uh, fix this and it seems to be working just perfect. The solution is uh, very reliable and proven, but of course uh, a portal crane will not have a wheel suspension like this. Then we're also removing that uh, old bulb because it consumes a humongous amount of power. And I'm also disassembling the holder for the lamp and desoldering the cable. Also remove the contact bed for the slider contact. The motor I'm using for this is a geared motor. You can find this uh, quite cheaply on eBay or Wish. This one was just uh, four dollars. So very nice price. However, these holes, they're tapped holes with uh, I think M 1.8 or 1.5. I can't work with that. I don't have anything in that size. So instead I'm drilling these holes up to 1.6 millimeter and tap new uh, threads into the holes. This is a M2 thread tap. Make sure not to drill or tap into the gear. Then you can test your thread with the M2 screw like this. Yeah, works fine. Now the center hole was so big, so there is no use in trying to drill holes next to it. Instead, I make two slots, which I can fit my screws into. And then I assemble the second screw and screw it firmly in place. This is what it looks like. Make sure that the screws also do not go into the gear. And then connect the motor to current so you see that it's still working. Now we're gonna make some rework also on this bottom piece of this uh, isolator plate. Because we need room for our assembly screws for the motor we just assembled. And uh, this is uh, grinded using a file as well. Once this done, you can reassemble that contact bed for that rotary slider contact. I pre-assembled and checked alignment for the wheels using fast set glue. And then I'm adding two component epoxy, epoxic resin to cover and strengthen the bond to the crane from the wheels or wheel suspension. The epoxy I'm using is a 15 minute type. Once cured, I paint all of this in the same silver paint as uh, the crane. Now it's time for some electronics. This is uh, a decoder from the kit 6760. It's a very simple FX decoder I just had laying around. If you don't have an egg decoder, I would advise you to use the MLD3 instead. It has more outputs and more options uh, to uh, fine tune the motor. I would say afterwards that this decoder was maybe a bit low end for this application. Again, I'm using this uh, sticky rubber, which is not only good for posters, but also to fix decoders. Solder the motor wires in place. And then it's time for the contact blades. These can be taken from uh, car illumination sets. Um, they typically contain thin copper, spring copper like this. And then just solder cables to the power input for the decoder. Press the crane in the surface to get marks. And then I use a L-shaped aluminum profile which I've uh, fixed to the surface using paper tape. I will grind a groove for the rail using my motor grinder. And this uh, grinder is slightly wider than the rail is wide. I just grind it like this and fit the track inside. Make fitting with the crane to make sure to get the correct position for the second rail. In the end of the grooves, I drill holes for the feeder cables. For this, I use a 2.5 millimeter diameter drill like this. Yeah. And I just to feed the cables through. And the rails, I simply just fix them using wood glue or punal or PVA glue. 
like this and then I'll just drop the rails into the groove. Once dry you can weather it using airbrush to get a bit of that characteristic corrosion marks around the rail. With the base part completed of this uh, portal crane will now continue the assembly of the top part. I've cut a hole which corresponds to the motor shaft in a piece of wood. I put the crane on top, make mark for where to saw, and then I just saw it out from that piece of wood and fit that into the hole in the crane like that. The wood piece is uh, secured and assembled using fast set glue. This is uh, also a piece from our uh, car illumination set. It's a uh, spring copper and I feed that into the hole as well and fix it using fast set glue. Once dry I fold it somewhat. For the cockpit we will add a driver and also replace the illumination using LEDs. But then I thought to myself, hey, let's uh, go for a transparent uh, glass instead. And this is uh, some scrap packing I had lying around. I think this is uh, roller curtains, actually from Ikea. So I just uh, cut a corresponding piece of this uh, plastic and measure so I get uh, the different parts in the right size. And then I just use my steel scale as the, to fold the plastic piece. Uh, once done, I just uh, try it into that cockpit. Seems to be working fine. Another nice detail I would like is to have the window slightly open. I think that uh, it's, a, it's a hot summer day on my layout, so why not? I just uh, put something in um, the back, the window, and then I make marks with my scalpel. Like this. Then I put it onto a piece of wood and I cut out the window. It looks like this. The sashes for the window will be made from 025 by 05 millimeter strip styrene. This is an evergreen product. Um, you can also use Plastistruct, they have similar. To paint the sashes, uh, I'm using white acrylic paint, which I will mix with a portion of brown and yellow to get the same color as the original cockpit sashes so i think we're yeah this is kind of close a bit more gray but it's okay yeah, and then i'm just painting this um, strip styrene and once dry i glue it in place using fast set glue with one piece at a time yeah cool with the clear windows uh, in place, I realized that uh, the cockpit doesn't look all that nice. Uh, so I had to paint the front black to hide the metal construction a bit here. So I'm just covering up. And also I realized that this fella had two long legs, so we need to make some amputation before he fits into that cockpit. The LEDs I'm using is from LED strips, uh, bought uh, cheap on Wish for uh, car or coach illumination. And I cut away one LED, attach a diode for rectification of the current and then a serial resistor of 15K ohms. And then it's just to assemble it all, try so it actually works connect the LED to the slider contact and then just assemble the crane again and take a photo for the command station icon. Only drawback I found was that the motor is a bit high RPM so you have to maneuver the crane on the lower 
numbers of your speed throttle. And the light works perfectly with the contact mechanism from 1958. And here they are in the harbor with the pallets, barrels and the reels. It's these details that really makes the difference on the layout, I think. Details, details, details. That's uh, really what makes the difference between different layouts, I think. And you can simply never get enough. And uh, a few words also about this crane conversion, because um, I was ripping off a, a, a lot of this um, sophisticated me mechanics, which originally was on the crane, and um, replaced it with only one possible movement and you know to start with it's three you can rotate and lower and rise the, the bucket and so on the crane the hook uh, so i will probably come back to this there is a room for uh, more motors and motorizations inside that cabin so i think it will be uh, kind of easy to integrate uh, more functions into it another word is that uh, the motor i got the gear has a uh, maybe not uh, enough gear ratio so the the outgoing rpm at nominal voltage is a bit too high which you might have noticed when i uh, maneuver the throttle i you know only use the speed step one two three and that is of course not optimal so i will try to find a motor with a, a bit higher gear ratio to to uh, to overcome that and to be able to uh, use a, a wide range of the speed register. Enough about that. Hey, uh, did you know that this channel is 100% uh, dependent on the patrons and people who sponsor and support the channel. So if you want to be one of the good guys now when it's Christmas and everything, <laughs> Get over to Patreon and set up a support account there from like $1 per month or make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And if you're not a subscriber yet, become a subscriber and enable the little bell and you will get a notification once the next video gets published. Until that happens, see you.